Good morning. Welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grove here, your host on Revive Reform Radio. During our live talk program covering motivation on your Monday morning rise and shine. And this Monday morning here, we're looking at the topic, the loss, um, the loss of religious liberty is not the only end time trouble. Uh, you need to be prepared for um, long topic there. So loss of religious liberty is not your only end time trouble. And so we're looking here at this topic as we deal with certain momentous events that are going on in our society, in our world. And so we want to look at this here this morning. So again, welcome to the Live Talk program. Hopefully you had a blessed night rest and you're ready to take on today, that the day that the Lord has given you. And so we'll um, do this here this morning as we do our Live Talk program. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord, and ever, we thank thee again for the blessings of your word, the blessing, dear Lord, of life. Pray that you may be with us, dear Father, as we study together and meditate upon these things that we might have the inspiration to move and to do the things that we ought to do for these times. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're looking again at this um, very important topic here, um, the loss of religious liberty. The loss of religious liberty is not the only end time trouble you need um, to prepare for. And so normally this is something that is um, kind of like a mainstay in our belief system that we are concerned about the loss of liberty um, and primarily primarily there probably be religious liberty and so um, we want to look at this um, and um, just contemplate what's going on here because this is something this is probably the main focus of what we do um, when it comes on to religion church all that is this massive concern that what happened if I lose my religious liberty and this most actually is important because this is one of the, this is the main issue at the end of time but as you notice there's a lot of discussions going on in society about freedoms and um, what we will call liberty the liberties that are um, acknowledged in the Constitution and is part of our national fabric is this idea of liberty, liberty of um, freedom of speech and freedom of assembly, freedom of um, you know religion, all these different freedom of the press, and so the general thought of freedom is a major factor. But as I'm going to talk about here, this is one factor, but this factor is created by other factors, and there's other considerations that we have to have to prepare. And what has happened for most part, I believe, is that the church uses and teaches religious liberty as um, like a cheat sheet. So this idea of religious liberty or the change where the American Constitution will one day change and we no longer have the liberty to assemble the freedom to um, you know, print and to say certain things in public because those freedoms are going to be taken away. Uh, this here idea here, primary of religious liberty, to me is used as a cheat sheet that as long as you understand this one thing and you don't understand anything else, you're prepared for the times that are coming upon us. And what it has done is that it has made people become one-sided and forget that it is important for them to be good and to also important for them to be a Christian. So the idea of Christian principle or, or righteousness or morality gets thrown out and the only thing you have to do is just know about what we call the national son of law or the loss of religious liberty in America. And as long as you understand that, um, it doesn't matter anything else that's going on in the society because you're good, because you're prepared for the end times, because you know about you know, the national son of law, the mark of the beast, and all this type of stuff. And that's the only thing you focus on. And you have a whole generation of people that that's the only thing that makes them Christian make them seven Adventists is this idea that they're prepared for this um, thing. And while this is happening, there's a lot of problems that are going on in the society. And these problems primarily stem from immorality. These problems stem from um, just the, you know, just the ign ignoring of laws and rules and the Bible and God himself. And so you have a people that say, the only thing you need to worry about is this one thing. And, but that one thing is a symptom of a greater problem, which is immorality. 
So people are not prepared to be thoroughly Christians. They're just prepared to be people that sit day in, day out, waiting for the overturn of the Constitution of America and the National Southern Law. And whoever understands that theory and understand that concept is truly Christian or truly Seventh Adventist. But to love your neighbor as yourself, to love God with all your heart, is not the primary focus. So this is what I want to talk about here today. And certainly it will get a little very clearer. Before I go into my main passage of scripture, I'm going to read um, a few verses from my main passage of scripture because I'm going to spend most of my time in Amos chapter 5. But first I'm going to read Amos chapter 5, verse 18 through 20. Amos chapter 5, verse 18 through 20. Say, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? So here he describes the day of the Lord as something that is um, not... Um, a pleasant experience, an experience that you run from one thing and then you run into another. And as you run from one event or one issue to another, one scare, one fear from one to another, it is just bad things are happening. And you saw that recently where somebody leave one island and they go to another island or they leave one area of the country going to another and then run into one problem. You leave one area and it's hurricanes you're fleeing from, you go to another area and then your house burned down. And um, this is more or less how I understand the troubles that are coming, that the troubles are coming are multitudinous. There's various different problems that are coming and the primary preparation is to prepare your heart and to have the right relationship with your God. Because there's so much trouble coming that if, if you think, well, I'm safe here or safe there, well, there's no safety in, in no position or in any place. So wherever you go, whatever you do, you will run into a problem. And that tells me that the preparation is different. So while others are saying, the only thing you need to worry about is this one thing, and they make people become unbalanced and fanatical over one issue. They become one issue, and that's normally a fanatic. They only talk about one issue. And the one issue that the fanatics um, creators normally talk about is just this issue of national Sunday law. And everything else that is happening in the society, they don't talk about it. And it's especially when it's linked to morality because they don't think it's important. And so they're unprepared. And when trouble comes, they realize the trouble is coming from all fronts. Because the problem is God has a problem with our society. And society, just in general, is getting more wicked and dark. Because the emphasis in a church is not morality. Again, the emphasis in the church is not morality. You go to the mainline church and all they're talking about is grace and praise in the Lord. You go to our churches, the ones, that the few that will talk about anything that's serious, they only talk about is what the Pope is doing and the national son of the law. But... To be fair, to be just, to be kind to your brother, to do the right thing is not important. What's important is that you understand that one day the American Constitution will be overturned and we will lose the liberties. But there's people all the time that lives in America that don't have those liberties. you know. And so when you understand that, you understand what's really going on here that the problem is with, is with morality. You know, there's so many people right now that are protesting the NFL players kneeling, but they so they, those same people don't see a problem with um, people having so much liberties that they can move about, plan and execute the mass murder of a whole bunch of people without nobody triggering anything, without nothing being triggered, no investigation. And the guy over by Las Vegas could just massacre those people. And nothing is triggered. But if I'm walking on the road and I'm harassed by police, nobody thinks that's a problem because I'm black. So when you look at liberties and all that type of stuff and you understand that, you understand that morality is a problem. It's because people are immoral, that they're not just, and they don't look at things in a balanced way. So the primary text most naturally is found in Revelation chapter 
13, Revelation chapter 13, verse 14 through 17. Now we look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 14 through 17. You get this passage of scripture that deals with what is being what is predicted as going to be the major issue, the number one issue, which is the loss of liberty in the United States. And as you look at this um, text, one would say this is the only text in the Bible. And if you follow some people the way they preach and teach and do their ministry, they approach this text as if it's the only text in the Bible. And it's the only issue in the Bible. And the only thing you need to know, as long as you know this, you're a good Christian. And that's it. And all the rest of the Bible that to deal with what it is to be a Christian. Because this text per se is not dealing with what it is to be a Christian. It's just telling you an issue that's going to be... The, the Christians are going to face and probably the biggest issue and the last issue in the drama but up until here there's a whole bunch of things that are happening and there's people who are expert at this passage of scripture I'm about to, about to read but they don't know how to be a good spouse they don't know how to be a good friend they don't know how to be a good Christian or follow of Jesus Christ but they know this text and and the question is do they really know it when you're a part of the problem in a society, not part of the solution. So in Revelation 13, verse 14, it says, And deceive at them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by, the, by a sword, and they live, live. So one entity forced others to create a system and to pay homage to another entity that is as pure evil verse 15 and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed so here is where the law is enacted that anyone who not doesn't go along with um the honoring and the the of of a uh, false system and the false laws and rules of that system should be killed and verse 16 says and he he calls it all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in his right hand and in his in their foreheads and that no man might bar bar sell save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name Right, so no man might be able to buy or sell, save he has a mark number. So this has been a focus. People have studied this through so much, and it is worthy of study. It is worthy of our attention. But this understanding of this, this understanding of who is the beast, who is the the beast that is giving honor to the other beast, what is the laws that are being pushed forward, and all that, very important to understand. But yet it does not replace your um, commitment, your relationship with God, you being a Christian. And I noticed over the years that that has seemed to be what has been replaced. That it's, it's to me, as I say, I call it like a cheat sheet. If you know this and you understand this, then you're good. But you being a Christian uh, through and through is not that important. And so many people have run with that. And they basically, they rest their whole experience on this one understanding, which to me is limited. Because if you understand this and you understand what's, how it's going to play out, but you're not a Christian, what's the point? So, in Mind chapter 24, verse 42 through 51. Mind chapter 24, verse 42 through 51. It says here, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man coming. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily, verily, or verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So here in this passage of scripture, the Lord described what will be, um, the, well first, before we describe what is going on in the last days, 
he explained to us that there is this idea here that it's since we know not what hour the Lord cometh, it is important for us to be watching, be on your guard, to watch and to because you don't know when the thief cometh, and so he described his coming as like a thief. Therefore, you ought to be ready because you don't know what. So the question is what it is to be ready because many people have substituted what we call religious liberty or the overturning of the constitution of the United States as that's what you need to know and that's what you need to be looking out for. That might be true that it's important for you to know um, what are the signs. But notice here the focal point that Christ put emphasis on is being ready because if you're not ready, it doesn't matter when the thing happened or what's happening. If you're blown out of your Christian experience today, that's all that matters. If you've lost your experience with the Lord, that's all that matters. So you have to be ready. And that's the only focal point is just being ready. And so if the focal point is, oh, you need to know what's happening here, what's happening there. It doesn't matter. Even if you don't know prophetically, per se, everything that is important, which I think is important to know these things. And you're not ready. You're just not ready. Whether you know or not know, if you're not ready, you're just not ready. And so the focal point is not to get ready and stay ready and know what you're getting ready for. The focal point is just this one narrow understanding. And that has made um, basically fools of so many people because so many people have noticed they're falling out of the Christian faith. They're losing their footing or they're being surprised by struggles in life and problems in the end times that they're not prepared for because the only thing they were prepped up for is this one issue. So again, let me put it this way because um, I've been talking here for 17 minutes now. Just imagine you are told that the overturn of the Constitution is the final act of the drama. But there's 10 different things that are going to happen. You know, there's going to be immorality. Violence are going to increase. There's going to be some of the problem with false doctrines. All these different things that are outlined in the Bible. But the final big act is this one act. And you prepped up all the time. And all you prepare for is the final act, the one big act. And you're not prepared for the other things going to happen. Problems in the family. Problems, you know, at your work. You know, problems with entertainment. Problems with your kids being disobedient to parent. And, you know, you need to learn how to train up your kids. And you did all your focus on this one final act. But the 10 things that are going to happen before this final act come to being. Because that final act is a symptom of all the other 10. Or the end product. Of all the attendance, it's the last domino that falls. And you didn't prepare. Now what happened? You get blown out of the water. You lose your salvation, so to speak, over this you know, being not, not being prepared. And so you're preparing everything for the final and you don't even live to see the final because you get washed away by the flood because you built your house upon sand. And that to me is to me, just simply what's happening, that people are building their house upon sand and not prepared for the troubles that are upon us already and are getting worse because they're preparing for this one end time drama while stuff is happening. It's like when I study, as an example here, because here the Bible says those who feed the people are those who bless so when I study, I understand that there is going to be problems with, say, health. You know, it's going to be out of disease. And say you're prepared and all your preparation is to deal with the situation of an, a national sin of law or the loss of religious liberty. And you're prepared to deal with the loss of religious liberty. And you're not focusing on, I need to make sure I eat a healthy diet. And then all the troubles that come in your life that make you feel like you're in the end time and the, the Lord is about to come is you having health problems. Your health is just failing you. And that's your end time struggle, struggle, troubles because you're not being prepared for life. You're just prepared to face this last thing that comes right at the end. 
And that to me is where the problem is. Imagine you put all your focus into this one thing, you prep up for it, and then your children walk away from the Lord because you didn't focus on making sure that they learn the word of God as a whole, as a as a, a whole in the sense of one the full message. You just get them prepped up to understand about the papacy, understand about, you know, religious people and what they're trying to do to take away your freedom. But yet your kids gone, your spouse gone, your marriage fall apart, all of these things happening to you. And you end up like Lot instead of being like Abraham. This is part of where the problem is. You look at people, they're so focused. You know, imagine you live on a river and you live where the river could crest and destroy your whole, your whole household and wash away everything. And your only focal point is this one issue. And you're not looking at, wait a minute, where do I live? Is where I live, is it a flood prone area? Is it a fire prone area? Am I prepared? Do I have rainy day funds? What am I prepared for? But you run off wild, gone, you know, chasing after shadows, you know, and getting scared because of a shadow, every wind that blow. You're gone. You spend your time preparing for this one thing, but you didn't get a proper understanding of salvation, of justification, sanctification, proper understanding of doctrine and being rooted and grounded in the word. And so you only focus on one thing and that's your only study. And then now when the troubles come again, when the false doctrines blow, you get blown out of the church. And I've seen people go and live a secular life. And you say, what happened? What happened to you? Why are you living like that? Because they were only prepared for one thing. And since that one thing didn't come, and it's taking too long to come because as Christ says, you don't know what hour the man is going to come in, the thief is going to come in to bust down your house. So he said, get ready, be prepared. But you're not prepared because some, some people believe preparing is just to understand. How is that de character development? How are you prepared that you could not receive the mark of the beast? How, how, how is that character development? Uh, how are you prepared to know how the end time prophetic um, things are going to happen? What it has to do with treating your neighbor right? What has to do with being honest in business? What that has to do with just being a Christian through and through, being kind, being fair, being just. And this is what's missing. And so many people have gone on that road thinking, oh, they're a good Christian because they know about the Pope, the papacy, which is a, stu it's a study in darkness. That's all it is. I've met some of the most horrible Christians in my life that they know a lot about the papacy and the wickedness of the papacy and they study about the national son and law, the mark of the beast. They study about the religious liberty and they're just horrible people. So you say, what's the point of that? You're not prepared to meet your maker, but you're prepared to understand the end times. That's your preparation. So we need to be prepared thoroughly. We need to be grounded in the word. We need to be Christians in our lives. Our primary testimony should be what our family could testify of us inside our homes. So here Christ continues with this idea here in verse 48 of Matthew 24. It says, But then if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayed his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant come shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So most of the servant here, as Christ described, is not a hypocrite. It's just simply going to be appointed his portion with the hypocrites because he was a good servant. And um, he was doing right, but something happened because there was a delay, an apparent delay as it seems, as it's also also outlined in Matthew chapter 25. And he started to go the wrong way. And I believe this is where the problem with this false preparation, because I've seen many people done that. They prep up, they believe that, oh, Christ could come a month from now. You hear people say that all the time. Christ could come tomorrow. Christ could come a, a week from now. And they don't think, say, well, if Christ come a week from now, what's going to happen to all the prophetic 
um, utterance, all the things that the Bible, the Bible predict will happen in the last days. Because Christ says, not one jot or tittle shall fail from the word. And so they tell this lie. And they say, oh, National Son of Law, it could happen next week. But nobody's talking about what you need to do. You need to get your soul prepared for the Lord. You need to be a Christian. You need to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. And that's your preparation. But they think, well, no, what I need to do is study about the National Son of Law or learn about the Pope or learn about religious liberty. And all those things, those things might have their place. But your place is to be a Christian. And when you do this, then what you'll find that you'll be prepared for the second coming. But most people, again, uh, have been trained that this is the only thing. So as I say, you have an end-time drama. And you have something that is said is going to be the last act of the drama, the last controversy. And somebody said, well, the only thing I need to do is prepare for the last controversy. Well, if you prepare for the last controversy, you're making a mistake because that's not the only thing to prepare for. you got to be prepared for the other things that are coming upon the land. And when you do that, you'll be in a better position. So, here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse um, 9, verse 10, 10, 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, 11 says, Whosoever, Whatsoever thy hands find to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. I returned and saw unto the sun that the race is not for the swift. And I've seen this where many people, they think what they need to do is get out of the block fast. And you always try to remind people that the message you hear, the things you're learning, there's other people have learned it before you, you know, and they rushed out real quick. You see people, you know, they learn a little thing about, say, country living, and they rushed out not fully understanding the message and the purpose. And so you say the race is not for the swift, nor the battle given to the strong. This is the whole idea again. Neither the Bible give it to the strong. Uh, a good example of this, I always see in light of what we're talking about here. Nor the Bible given to the strong is that you'll find that many times, you know, people will talk about you know end time preparation, and they they will say what we need is more guns. So they go stockpile guns because they believe that's going to be their end time preparation, and then now nothing happens. And the only thing happened is probably a tornado come or a hurricane or a fire. And they're preparing for some type of assault type situation. They're preppers. And that's their preparation for trouble. And that trouble don't come. At least it don't come yet. He hasn't come yet. And all they're facing is a tornado just wipe the house out. Them and their bullets and their gun and everything just get go flying. And that's it. Because they're they're one sided or are they simple minded in their preparation. Others they same thing, a fire come, burn the house down and the house become like a um like a fireworks because all those bullets going off. When the fire is hit it because their preparation is one sided, don't understand what the primary preparation is your soul, it's your character. This is what the preparation need to be. Now the other things are important to understand and it's always best to put yourself in a better situation. But when it's all said and done, your primary focus is supposed to be who you are as a person, as an individual. The others you got to get prepared for also because it's a whole preparation. Also, it says here, neither yet bread for the wise, all right, nor yet riches for men of understanding, nor yet favor for men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. So in that Bible it says one ought to in that text there it says one ought to be serious, one ought to be focused on whatever you have to find to do. And know that also what's playing a role here is time and chance. Um time and chance happen to them all, but not everybody win the prize. Right? The prize comes to those who are diligent, those who go at it and go at it. And so when we come on to our end time preparation, we have to be diligent. Uh, we can't Ignore one thing for the other. As Christ said, this you ought to do and not leave the others undone. But many believe that what they need to do is prep up by, as I say, getting more bullets probably. That's a need. I don't know where you live. Depends on where you live. You probably need more bullets than other places. But that's not our focal point. Our focal point is to be prepared, to be get ready. Now, in the text that I started out with to me is the 
the probability takes I could have used this morning to illustrate my point, but I just wanted to broaden it and use some other text. So remember again our topic, the loss of religious liberty is not the only end time troubles or only end times trouble you need to be prepared for. So the loss of religious liberty is not the only trouble you need to prepare for. There's other trouble, as I've illustrated before I read Amos here. The last act of the drama is the overturning of the U.S. Constitution that will unleash basically the U.S. military against the righteous. That's what we understand. But before that, there's a lot of things that are happening that leads to that. That's like a domino effect. If these things happen over here, then it will create this type of environment in the United States where freedoms that we so dearly enjoy will be removed. And if we notice what's happening right now in America, we're gearing up for that because both the left and the right are having problems with the Constitution because the Constitution either seems to limit them or to give them too much freedom. On both sides, if you're on the liberal side, the Constitution gives you a lot of freedom to you know, do things like gay marriage. If you're on the conservative side, the Constitution gives you so much freedom to basically stock, stockpile you know, machine guns and bomb stocks and all that stuff. So I notice every time somebody raises their head and say something or do something, you start to have this question about should this person have the right? If you notice, when the, 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 the black men in the NFL say, look, we're, we're being abused in our communities and being shot and killed by the police, and we want to stand or we want to kneel or we want to hold and the white says, no, you can't do that. Some people say, well, yes, they can't do that because we have religious liberty. Some people say, no, they can't do that because this is a job place. You can't go on your job and protest on your job as you get fired and so forth and so on. And so although every morning you go to your job, you, you have to stand to the national anthem. I don't know about you, but I've never been to a job where before I start working, I have to pledge allegiance to the flag that guarantee my rights as a citizen while the police is out in the street taking away my rights. But when you look at this, all of this is going on and most of this, or in all of it, has to do with morality and justice. So that's what we're looking at. But the more this discussion goes on, is the more the question of the Constitution keep coming up. And we know there's a dominant effect and things are going to go a certain way. But in between all of that, as, as I'm saying, you have things that we're supposed to be prepared for. And many people, they're not prepared for it because they're only ready to face one problem. They're one side in their Christianity. And the main thing that they're supposed to do, they're not doing. So let's go back to Amos chapter it's 5 now. I'm going to go through most of Amos chapter 5. We're going to start to verse 6. Start at verse 6 and we're going to go all the way down to verse 27. I think that's the end of it there. It says, Seek the Lord and ye shall live lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. So this is the Lord speaking to and dealing with the children of Israel. And he's saying to them, because they're in rebellion, they're not doing the right thing. He says, you shall seek the Lord and you shall live. And if you don't seek the Lord, he shall break out like fire. So when we see all these troubles that are going on, and these troubles are not just troubles that has to do with um, nature. Because somebody could say, well, all the problems we're looking at are natural problems. But we're looking at problems that are not just to do with nature, but they're problems that has to do with what's going on in our society. And when we look at these problems and we see them, we understand what the Lord is doing. The Lord here is making the people get what they read, what they sow. And Lord, as he says, an avenger, the evil, as the evil rise, the Lord do certain things. So the Lord says, look, seek the Lord. And this is what the people need to be doing. This is what we need to be calling people to. No cheat sheet religion. No, if I believe this, I'm good. You need to be good. You need to seek the Lord. Verse 7 says, Yea, who turn judgment into wormwood and leave off righteousness on the earth. Um, I leave righteousness on the earth. Sorry here. No, ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion 
and turn it the shadow of death into the morning and make it the day dark but with night that call it for the waters of the sea and pour them up out upon the face of the earth the lord is his name so all the lord is saying here is to seek him to turn to him and when we do this we receive the blessings that we ought to receive right and so this is the problem as we face the day of the lord as we face trouble that the message that's supposed to be coming out of the churches and men who preach righteousness is supposed to be a message of turning to the lord of repenting of turning to righteousness but often this is missed for all you need to do is believe in this or believe in that or you know if you know it's almost all the latest false doctrines that has rolled through the church that i'm aware of they have to do with um you know just believe in this doctrine they don't have nothing to do with calling people to righteousness if you believe in this doctrine or this belief or this calculation or this understanding of end time prophecy you're good but it's on talk about that you need to seek justice you need to seek righteousness you need to do the right thing because notice in verse 7 it says ye who turn judgment into wormwood ye who turn judgment into wormwood normally if this is referring to the herb you know, wormwood, any type of um, parasite, parasite herbs are some of the worst tasting herbs. It's horrible in their taste. And so when you talk about judgment, you know, really even oppress, taking care of the fatherless, the widow, they make it bitter. They make it a terrible experience. And they leave off righteousness in the earth. Talk about righteousness. I always say, I can preach about religious liberty and I don't have to be living right. It is just a rudimentary topic. But when you talk about righteousness, you're not, you know, the commandment, doing the right thing, being a clean person, a respectable person, a decent person. This is missing. I always find it fascinating that how many people I've met in the past who were expert, they talk so great about, you know, they could give you such long seminars and talk about you know the the Pope and the papacy and religious liberty and what the 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 the, the what you call it the the black hops and the black Pope and the you know the underground movement and the Freemasons and all these these things they can talk about all these shadow government and all that and they have no character they're not loving they're not kind and nice people they 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 they're unjust they're unfair. They can't see oppression. They never see the wickedness that's going on in society. They never heard a sermon from one of these guys who they, they could spend all day long talking about every wickedness that goes on in the shadow government. And they could talk about, you know, like all these things about, you know, all these governmental things that I can't even remember now. <laughs> and they could talk all about this, but you never hear them talk about, hey, you know what we're not doing? We're not doing right. As a people, we, we need to be kind to those that we have conquered and those that we have been historically oppressing. They're not nice. And that's what I've seen over the years. And I've seen this over and over again. And I say, yeah, listen to all this great talk about, you know, you know, this act, action here. These people are, are, are acting and this, this all these things, you know, all these crazy conspiracy theory. But the obvious wickedness that's going on in the land they can't talk about it. They, they have no opinion. And you see them, you say, you know, I mean, you corrupt and wicked as ever. That's the problem. And this is the Lord going to pour his wickedness upon you. So verse 9 says, that strengthen the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuke in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. So I guess that that would fall on me, right? So if you speak against the wickedness that's going on, they don't like you because they're immoral. You know, one of the first time I remember running to this was running to in church. Where, you know, you have some decent men, they're professional men, and then I realized that these men are immoral. They have no judgment. They don't care for those who are oppressed. They believe it's right for us to use our our military to go attack nations and take what they have. And I'm saying, how can these people be Christians? 
And it was part of my education into why wickedness continue in the land and why judgments will increase. Uh, they not only hate him that rebuke and negate, but verse 11 says, For as much therefore as your treading down is upon the poor, and you take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. So when we say many of these judgments and calamities happening, and they happen in the land, we have to understand that this is part of what's going on in the end time because of the immorality. So if I tell you that says your primary you know, work is not only how you take care of, as James says, the widow and the fatherless, but is that you keep yourself unspotted from the world. This is your primary work. Now I'm not saying understanding about some black ops and about what the shadow government is doing is not important. I don't think it's that important. Um, but if that's what you want to study, go ahead and study that. But remember, you know, you're studying. Make sure that says you're an, you're a Christian through and through, that you've repented of your sin, that you're you love those that are being oppressed by the wicked system that we have. It's important for you to understand that because if you don't, all your study now, your preparation and learning about the papacy and what the papacy is doing, and all of that, there's not a amount and avail you nothing. If you're still rotten and arrogant in your character. It's important for you to understand that. So again, it says, For as much, therefore, as you're treading upon the poor. Now, notice in the last thing that's happening, and, and this is important as, as, as I want you here, to think about this now, the last things that happen. You have these black guys in the NFL, they're saying, Hey, look, I think you guys need to consider well what you're doing when you keep you know, shooting and killing and maiming these black people. And we're going to protest that. Then the president come along and then he change it and say, oh no, they're not protesting the oppression and the beating down of the blacks. That's a historical narrative in America. What they're doing is they're disrespecting the flag. That's what he said. They're disrespecting the flag and we can't tolerate the disrespect of the flag without ever acknowledging the historical wrongs and the current wrongs that have been done to these people in the ghetto. And people were not in the ghetto because nobody's um, free from this where well, you can just be pulled over and harassed because of the color of your skin. And instead of addressing this, you just say, oh no, these guys, this is what they're doing. What they're really doing is they're disrespecting America. And then you just turn the narrative on them and twist what they're doing. And then you see what happened even yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday with the vice president. So when you see this, then basically they're saying, we don't care. Shut up and go play ball. We don't care what's happening to you if you're dying in the streets. So this goes to me and tell me that here you have, and then you have the general population who is saying, yeah, we don't care either. What you need to do is just play ball and just respect that flag. But the problem is the flag represent my religious liberty. It represent my rights. So I thought it was interesting that here you have now they're saying you put such every pressure on us. You constantly police us. You constantly investigate us because you're saying you're doing criminal profiling because black people do most of the crimes in America. So that's the pressure that's upon us. We always been watched because we are viewed not much better than the Muslims because we're destroying America. So here you have now an older guy, multimillionaire. He's able to buy over 100,000 guns. He's able to move around freely. He's able to buy tannerite. He's able to buy ammonia nitrite, I think it is. He's be able to buy all these bullets. He's be able to buy all kind of stuff um, to be able to not do a massive urban assault. The same urban assault, these conspiracy theories, and these many various religious conspiracy theories are being preaching about that the government is going to do. So he's able to carry out what the government they think is going to do on the population. And he was able to not be in profile because he's not the focus of investigation. He's not the trouble that this society is facing. But the guy that's walking on the street, um, he's going to be roughed up, spoken to like he's an animal. And he might get upset and angry because he's been harassed. And then he gets shot because he gets upset and angry. And the general population, especially the Christians, that many of us have worshipped with it historically, 
would say, ain't nothing wrong with that. Because anyhow, black people doing all the crime. So what happened is, as I've covered last week, that when you ignore and you're unjust and you don't do right because you say justice is blind, but you make justice not blind and you don't, you know, fair and you don't do what is right, then what happened, trouble will come upon the land. But you have to understand the source of the trouble. But if you're not studying your Bible are you not learning just to be fair and to be a true person that has justice and morality? You will not understand what's going on in the society. And you will see the disasters, see the see the, 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 the tornadoes and the floods and the hurricanes and the, and the, the fires and the mass murders. And you're like, I don't understand what's going on because you, you don't understand morality. You don't understand that God will settle scores and God deal with things in a fair way. That you cannot oppress and beat on the people and think he's not going to come back. Because God says, what you sow, that is also what you reap. And that these people in the society, they're not fair. They're not honest with what they're doing. And because of that, a lot of the wickedness we see happening will happen. So part of our preparation, I believe, and it's going to go back to why people are missing all these things. Because not only do they never preach about fairness, but they don't study their Bibles. And they tell all their Bible students, how are you Bible students? The only thing you study is about the pulpit papacy. And you don't even understand what created the dark ages. So you can recognize what's happening inside of the U.S. right now. You you know, just this basic idea where they say all the crimes is done. Most of the crimes are done by black people in a disproportionate way. Because you're not investigating other people. Who, who is covering the crimes of all these little children that are going missing every year? Who, who, who is investigating them? How often do you hear about men who are being arrested for these crimes? Where these kids are being abducted and raped and buried and burned alive? Who, who's covering those crimes? Those crimes are not being investigated. You see the massive amount of kids going missing every year. And sometimes you find their bodies, sometimes you don't. Who's covering those crimes? But if you say that the only crimes are being done by one group of people, then you don't cover those other crimes that are being done. All the child molestation, all these mass murders, all these um, weirdos that go kill multiple people, serial killers and all that. Who's investigating that? Because you spend all your resources investigating one group of people, you're not fair. And this is part of the problem where you don't judge things properly according to righteousness. And so what happens is you make things get out of hand. And when they get out of hand, they're, you create other problems and as i say the loss of liberty is not our only time of trouble you need to prepare for you need to understand what's going on understand that the troubles are coming they're not going to be just because of that that's going to be the end drama we will see some terrible things amongst us because we see some terrible wickedness but if you don't understand that you think oh the only trouble that's going to come is one day we're going to get up and we're going to have a national son of law now understand that said that comes at the end before we get there, it's a slow creep to destruction because men are getting darker. And you, don't under, you, you wouldn't be able to understand why they're getting darker. Look at this. It says here, verse 12, it, it says here, For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, they take a bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Think about all the powerful preachers that we have. And you never hear them talk about this. Think about that. You think about all the people that people look up to and say, Oh, this preacher, oh, he's powerful. But you never hear talk about the corruption that's going on in society and in the church. You never hear talk about the oppression of the poor. And part of the reason, I believe, is because many times the oppression that is happening to people are people in a foreign country because of the exploits of the country the foreign exploits of its military and its financial men. And a lot of the time because the oppression and beatdown happened to blacks, so you don't hear these powerful preachers say anything because they might not want to offend their donors, so they don't say nothing. And it's like no wickedness is happening in this country. I remember I was talking to um, multiple times, I'll have discussion with people about, say, what we call the national son of the law, the, overturn of the religious liberty 
and you'll be talking to them and you say, well, well yeah, but um, isn't there more going on? Is, isn't is like what you, you know, because they will say like, I'll give you an example in Ro Revelation chapter 13, it will say that the country will speak as a dragon. So I say, um, so did it speak as a dragon because of slavery? And they start going red. I said, did it speak as a dragon because of Jim Crow law? Because of the war and drugs where they arrest the primary and the black men and lock them up? Is, is that because that was legislation? And legislation is the speaking of the country. I say all these different wars that were immoral, that were not called for, they were wars of conquest. Is that speaking like a dragon? Because they'll tell you, no, the only time America will speak as a dragon is at the end of the time. And they put everything off to the end. But they don't talk about what's happening today. What's happening when you create ghettos. And you create ghettos and put primarily the people who you are once enslaved. And you want to add on a Jim Crow law. You put them in these ghettos. And you make sure the schools are subpar. And they're caged up like animals. And they can't even get out of those areas. Because to get out of those areas, they probably get killed. Because they're in areas that they ought not to be. You don't talk about that. But yet you're going to tell me that we have a powerful message. And I say, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Tell me, what's your powerful message? Oh, what the Pope is doing. I mean, who cares about it? I mean, care about it to a point. Because you ought to be care. You have to watch that, that evil system. But people are dying right here. It, look, look at this text because it gets more potent as we get closer to where we, we had started. Look at this now. It says here, the trend none of the poor. Um, and it says here, you build your house, you live good. But he says, you're gonna you're gonna that's gonna mess up. That's not gonna work. Verse 12. For I know your manifold transgression and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. Now, when you afflict the just, that means the person didn't do you no wrong. The person ain't doing wrong. You know, in this America, I noticed the conversation about liberal and conservative. You know, but what may you live in righteous and you need the liberal conservative, but you're righteous altogether. But they'll give you a hard time. As I tell you, I can't go into any of these people's church. They run me out of there. Because <laughs> I'm not with their immorality and unfairness. Notice here it says, and they take bribe. This is what happened. The more money. Uh, I think what was beautiful, you know, people dislike um, OJ and Michael Jackson. Some people do. Um, but I think OJ and Michael Jackson was important because here it was. It showed what money can buy you. It can buy you powerful freedoms and it showed you this it showed up the system for what it is i don't know why people dislike them because really all they did is was to show that okay you can buy your freedom with money and this is how corrupt the system is but they're making it sound oh the judicial system is just it ain't not just you can buy yourself out of freedom and that's all they proved you have a lot of money you can buy people off and it says here for i know your money for transgression in my sins verse 13 um, yeah, you take bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. This is why they're releasing so many people from, through the Innocence Project. Because they keep finding out that so many of these guys went to prison and they, they, didn't, they shouldn't even been there. And then another whole bunch of guys went to prison and they got longer sentences that they should have because of drug crimes that their white counterparts didn't get. When was the last time you heard a sermon in church talking about this? You don't hear them talk about this. Because why? They're, they're just, they're corrupt. They're thinking the only thing they need to worry about is the Pope. And yet, the wickedness is happening right in front of them and they can't say a word. Notice here, therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in the time, for it is an evil time. You know? So, I'm, I guess I'm not being prudent here. <laughs> but Amos wasn't being prudent either because he was talking out against it. So, but if you're, I guess, a regular person, you go to work today... You just keep quiet and watch these evil people, what they're doing. And when their judgment comes, just say you understand. You side with God because you understand that says they're doing wickedness and they want to get away with it. And God says, now I'm going to punish you for your wickedness. Therefore, the prudent keep silent. Seek good and not evil that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good. Establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord, God of hosts, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So he says, look, if you do right, I'll do right. 
But if you don't do right, then wrong will keep coming. So people worried about the judgments in the land. That's not the focus. The focus is not the judgment. The focus is God is dealing with people for certain reasons. What we need to do is do right. But notice each time one of these storm comes, when these things come, you hear them talking and they're more unfair. You can go online and listen to them talk. And all they're talking about is they want to oppress the poor more. They want to do more wickedness. You know, no investigations from certain evil groups in our society. But they want to keep the pressure on the blacks and the poor people in the society. They want to give more tax credit to the rich. So what happened? God just wiping out their yachts along the shore with these hurricanes. This is what's going to continue to happen. Because guess what happened? They're not right. Notice it continue here. It says here, Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord um, said, Thus wailing shall be in the streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandman to the morning, and such as are, are skillful of lamentation to wailing, because it's going to be a lot of wailing. We are seeing this here. In all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, says the Lord of hosts. And you can see we are doing other vigils, and that's going to continue. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, for what is it? What end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As a, if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, and went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and not brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assembly. So when they go and they have all these worship service and they gyrate in themselves and make up a lot of noise. The Lord ain't hearing none of that because they're not doing right. Though ye offer me burnt offering and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat beasts. Take away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy voice. But let judgment run, do run down as waters and righteousness as the mighty stream. Uh, this was a cry of Martin Luther King Jr., Basically, what he was saying is that, yeah, we hear all your religious talk, America. We hear all your high talk about religious liberty and freedom, but your freedoms are only given to the whites. We want some freedoms too. We want our civil rights. And he would often use this statement here from Amos chapter 5, 24. But let judgment run down like wa as waters. Let it flow. If you're going to be right, just be right to everybody. But when the people are saying, no, if you go investigate, investigate. I believe in police and I believe in the police action. I'm one of those people who believe in the death penalty. I believe that says there's some people that need to be re removed off the face of the earth because they want to kill and maim and rape and do all kind of bad to people. And many times the police try to apprehend them. They want to kill the police also. I believe right has to be done. But you got to be fair to all people. You got to investigate all people. If you investigate for drugs, just investigate across the board. Don't tell me that one group is using more drugs, but you arrest the other group. Whites use more drugs two times more than blacks uh, uh, per percentage of the population. And yet you arrest the blacks more. You're not being right. And then, it may, and then you know, you have all these whites walking around and say, oh, blacks do more crime. How so? Who is doing most of the rapes? Who is doing most of the assassination or killing of these little kids? Who is doing it? So you can't tell me now that I said they're doing it, but they're not being arrested in high numbers. You're not doing right. And then verse 26 says, But ye have borne the tabernacle of Molech, Moloch, sorry, and Chiam, your image, images, the star of your God, which ye have made to yourselves. This is always interesting because they always talk about the star of David, and twice, both in this text and in Acts, it mentions God, Chiam, and, and talking about a star. And it's the only place you find in the Bible where there's a star that is connected. To, to David and to the Jew, uh, Chiam your God, the star of your gods. I never find it nowhere else in the Bible. Probably it, there's such a thing as a star of David, but I always find these two texts in Acts here and in Amos as referring to Chiam your God. There's a side note because they're pagan worshippers, in other words. They're claiming to worship God, but they're evolutionists and pagans. 
Um, and this is why they're doing the wickedness they're doing. And God is saying, get rid of those things and go back to God, the living God. Therefore, will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus? So the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. And we're seeing this year with a drug epidemic and all the different epidemic. Because righteousness, as it says here in verse 24, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty sea. Do the right thing. Be moral. And God will bless. If you don't, the disasters I see, they're going to keep coming. And that's my motivation for you this morning, just to do the right thing. Don't follow the evil doors in our society being unfair and not looking at things from the right point of view. And instead of taking care of the poor and the people who are being damaged by the hurricane, you're just running around starting up trouble to try to reinterpret that people who are suffering, you know, trying to say they shouldn't cry out because this is a disrespect of the flag and all this celebration of Columbus and all this nonsense that we do. All not to be done. What we need to do is do the right thing. Let's pray. We thank you, O God, again for your love towards us. We thank you for your mercies. Pray, Lord, that we might be fair, we might be just, we might be kind. We might love those, dear Lord, who are suffering and side with the oppressed, no matter if they are black, white, or from Asia or wherever country they are from. May we do the right thing, dear Lord, and always love all men and love thee with all our hearts. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks again for being with me on Revive Form Radio. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow morning when we talk about the importance of church. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.